Hello, this is Amelia from AmeliaAJohnson.com, where passionate pet people partner with purpose for pleasure and profit. So my question for you today is why should you? And this is part of my five point checklist for your pet's lifestyle. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you get all the points that I have learned and found valuable from my decades of experience as a pet professional. So let's continue. Point number three is what we will cover today. Why should you? Why should you purchase pet insurance for your pet? I have yet to do this. I have watched my friends have pet insurance and they have told me the pros and cons. But now that it's been around quite a while, in fact, at least 40 years in one case, I am sure it has improved tremendously. So I picked up this brochure at my vet's office and it is for the pet plan insurance. Now you tell me or you can compare what you have as I just read through quickly what pet plan offers. It says it's pet insurance for a rainy day because you never know what can happen to your pet accidents, illnesses, whatever. And they want you to be prepared. And of course you want your pet to be able to be cared for. How many times have I been in vet's offices and my heart aches for those people that cannot go forward with their pet's treatment and their pets suffer as a result. And of course they suffer because they love that pet. So should you be carrying pet insurance? So in this case with pet plan, it offers more than what a lot of pet insurances do. In fact, this piece of mine comes standard, they say, because it offers coverage, coverage for accidents and illnesses, hereditary and chronic conditions. That's not always the case. Prescription medications, specialist treatments, x-ray, MRI, CT scan, and ultrasound imaging, and alternative therapies. Now I use a lot of alternative therapies for Gusto because I want him to be in the best condition possible for his show ring performances. And then they say they can uh, make your plan, personalize your plan. So you can have a maximum annual coverage. You can have a choice of $2,500 or unlimited. Your deductible can be a choice of $100 or $2,500. And you can be reimbursed at a rate of 70%, 80%, or 90%. So they want you to protect your pet today. The back of the plan, of course, lists certain issues that you can have with your pet to kind of bring this all forward. If your pet has an ear infection, in some places it can cost you over $4,000. In some cases, pets have been euthanized, I know personally, because the vets could never get that ear infection under control. And that is really sad. Another thing is brain cancer, $14,000. Now my Shotzi had brain cancer, but it was undiagnosed until it was really too late to have any kind of reversal. And her sister died from brain cancer. Totally different lifestyles. But again, there was no, and, and that pet owner caught it early but all the universities, all the vets could not change it, could not change the outcome. Kidney failure, over $7,000, and periodontal disease, $2,500. I am always amazed when I go to a dog show and I see show dogs with teeth that are dirty. Whether the people are afraid to have the vets clean the teeth under anesthesia, or they just don't have the money because they're spending it on showing their dog, I don't know. But there's no excuse for dirty teeth on your dog. 
really. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have for pet insurance. Let me know if you have pet insurance or would consider it or just, you know, use the savings plan for your pet. The other thing you want to carry under the why should you question is a pet alert card in your wallet or perhaps on you or on your dog's leash in case you're ever separated. In case you have a medical emergency, maybe you're a runner and you collapse and you're running with your dog, at least with that pet alert card, people will know how to get care for your pet and you. Let me take a sip of water here. So another thing under why should you, why should you create a pet profile document? Now you can start out with your rabies certificate and all your vaccines listed on a piece of paper. That's a good start because then they'll have the vet information, but they should also have your emergency contact information for you and your pet if you're traveling. I also have a sign on Gusto's crate, and I need to add this documentation to his show crate because you never know. You never know what can happen, and you want to be prepared. So many pets get separated, and there's no chance to reunite them. This is the first time I ever had a microchip for my pet because the last dog was too sensitive to many things and because microchips had a reputation for moving and then causing lameness. Hopefully that won't happen now, although they still do move. So the other thing to include in your documentation are such things as your pet food preferences, the treats, the medications, any medical conditions that your pet has, and of course we discussed the vet records, the microchip number, and how your pet behaves around other dogs and people and children. This is important. Because again, if you're separated and your pet is put into a situation, it would help anybody handling your pet, whether it's a dog or cat, to know where your pet is comfortable and not stress out your pet until you're re reunited. Okay? So why should you also choose a positive reinforcement training method? Because, again, if you're separated, you want your pet to be comfortable around other people and not ever feel threatened. So positive reinforcement helps your pet bond with you and other people based on trust and not fear. There was a dog running loose in the neighborhood recently and it was a pit bull mix. And of course, everybody wants to respect a pit bull and this one was growling at people. So nobody could get close to this dog. It was here in the neighborhood for two days. Finally, somebody got a Zoom camera and was able to get the number on the tags, excuse me, and through Facebook, we were able to reunite that dog with the owner without that dog having to go to the shelter which was a good thing because if that dog had gone to the shelter and the shelter staff was not that experienced because they do turn over rather rapidly from burnout, then that dog may have been considered unadoptable if the owner had not been found. That's not where you want to go. So make sure, in that case, of course, there was no documentation with the dog, just the tag number. But just be aware that you can provide that in your car or in your home with your pet sitter with your family so they know okay so that covers why should you do all of these things purchase pet insurance carry a pet alert card have pet documentation 
with you and, on, and near your pet and use positive reinforcement as your training method. So if you found this information valuable, again, be sure to subscribe to this channel and go to my blog at ameliaajohnson.com where you will see the complete five-point checklist for your pet's lifestyle. Thanks for watching.